Hello and welcome to Dressmaking Amore. Today I'm going to show you how to make these cute and perfectly wide shorts. I've been seeing these high-waisted flared shorts all over my Pinterest feed, so I decided to create a pattern that would be really easy to use to recreate this look. And of course, they have some beautifully top-stitched angled front patch pockets. So let's get to using our Andy sewing pattern to make these comfy shorts. Here are the materials you'll need. A serger is optional for these shorts, and in the instructional booklet that comes with your pattern, I show you how to make these shorts with a serger using very easy, simple sewing techniques. However, here in this video, I'm going to take you through sewing these shorts without a serger using some more advanced techniques. While I was choosing the fabric for my shorts, since there were lots of options, I used the denim manual from Fashionary to finalize my choice. I was looking to use some sort of denim, which I wanted to use for a long time now, and this little treasure of a book had lots of information that helped me in choosing exactly the right wash, type, and care for my fabric. In the end, I used a lightweight denim fabric that suited these shorts, and I went with this indigo blue color. Make sure you pre-wash the fabric with color catching sheets so that it won't bleed later, as some denim fabric can color your machine and your hands. This wonderful book explains different seams and techniques that are used for sewing denim and jeans, and I absolutely recommend it for anyone wanting to learn more about using and sewing denim, no matter your sewing experience. So please use the link below in the description to get the book, and use the code TIANA10 to save 10% off your order. Now I'll cut out the pattern pieces from my chosen fabric, and make sure to transfer the marks to make it easier to sew in the process. And a quick note, for the shorts that you see here, I used a size 6. If you want less wide shorts, like the ones here, you can just size down for this look. Okay, let's get to sewing. We're going to start by applying fusible interfacing to the top edge of the pocket. Use a pressing cloth so that the interfacing won't stick to your iron. Fold one centimeter of this edge to the wrong side and press. Then fold again two centimeters, following the marks on the sides of the pocket and press. Cool it down using a wooden clapper, which will take away the heat and moisture from your fabric. Then pin so that the fabric won't move while you sew. Trim the edges of the pocket if needed and repeat with the other pocket. Now top stitch the opening edge of the pocket two centimeters from the folded edge. and press. Stay stitch the pocket one centimeter from the edge as this will be our guideline for later. Fold the seam allowance on the bottom of the pocket to the wrong side and press. Start from the bottom edge and use the stay stitch as a guide to fold up evenly. Here I'm using a double stick fusible web to keep the seam allowances in place. This is optional, but if you have it on hand, I recommend you use it. Fold and press the side of the pocket. Fold the sharp corner of the pocket inside like so, and then fold the seam allowances right over. Transfer the marks for the pocket placement on both sides of the front pieces. Place the pocket between these marks and pin in place. Top stitch the pocket to the shorts 1 to 2 mm from the edge. And then place another stitch 4 to 6 mm from this previous stitch. Now secure the pocket at the side seam and sew the other pocket in the same way to make sure they're symmetrical. Now we're going to move on to our side seams. Place the front and back right sides together and now pin the side seams. If you're using a serger, you can sew and finish the edges here. Instead of a serger here, I'm going to use a flat felled seam. This stitch is strong and fits perfectly for a denim garment. I'll place the front and back pieces right sides together and pin, making sure to match the marks on the side. So the side seam allowance is 1.5 centimeters or half an inch from the edge. These shorts are wide and have a lot of ease in them, so I can make the seam allowances a bit bigger. Trim the seam allowances on the back, leaving about 4 millimeters. Take out the temporary stitch that held the pocket in place. Now press the side seams towards the back. From the right side of the shorts, fold the bigger seam allowances over the trim side, pin and press flat.
Now top stitch close to the folded edge. Your seam should be parallel to the previous seam. You can use an edge stitch machine foot if you have one for this. And press the side seam. I'll also use a flat filled seam for the inseam. Sew the inseam right sides together and trim the back seam allowances to half. Press the entire seam allowance length and now fold the larger seam allowances in half over the trimmed seam allowances and press. Then press the seam allowances towards the back side and pin. Top stitch 1 to 2 millimeters from the folded edge and your seam should be parallel to the previous seam. And now for the crotch seam. I'll use that same flat felt seam. Turn one of the pant legs inside out and place it inside the other leg. Pin the crotch seam matching the marks and the inseam. Start to sew at the first mark from the top edge of the back side. Sew the crotch seam 1.5 cm or half an inch from the front sides of the shorts. Then clip the fabric 1 cm from the mark. Now make a space about 2.5 cm of an opening and sew the rest of the seam, back stitching on both sides. Top stitch around the opening. Then trim the seam allowances around this opening and trim one side of the seam allowances in half. Press the whole seam allowance length then fold the larger seam allowance over the trimmed one and press. Clip the seam allowances on the inseam to make it less bulky. Then press the seam allowances towards the back side. It's a little bit difficult to do this on a curved area, so pin it following your curve, little by little. A basting stitch can help here as well. Press the pinned crotch seam. At the center back, hide the corner of the seam inside the seam allowances, just like this. And top stitch 1 to 2 millimeters from the folded edge. Your seam should be parallel to the previous seam. Then press the crotch seam. Now we're going to make our elastic waistline. Clip the corners of the seam allowances and fold 1 centimeter around the top edge and press. Mark 10 centimeters from the folded edge on the wrong sides of the shorts. Fold this folded edge to the mark line. Start pinning on the side seams and then pin on the center front and then back. After that, pin between these pins. Press the pinned edge. Around the center back seam, you'll notice that you have ease at the inner edge of the self of the waistband. Evenly distribute this between your pins so that the elastic casing will lay flat. Top stitch the inner edge of the waistline casing 1 to 2 millimeters from the edge. Now take an elastic smaller than your casing, about 5mm smaller, and insert it. Evenly distribute the elastic and make sure it's not twisted inside the casing. Then sew up the edges of the elastic. And here's the finished result of this. If you want, you can secure your elastic at the side seams to prevent it from folding or twisting inside. Fold 1 cm of the edge for hemming the legs of the shorts. Then mark 10 cm from the folded edge. Fold again to the marks and pin. Press the pinned edge of the hem and in the same way pin the other leg, checking that both legs are the same length. Top stitch the hem. Press the waistline to flatten the gathering and give your garment a final press like always and we are done with our charming little Andy shorts.
Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope this inspires you to sew these yourself. I know you're going to love them. You can get the PDF downloadable sewing pattern that I used at the link in the description of this video. And happy sewing!